Hello everyone, I'm Larry Lassiter, pastor of the Crusade Church of God in Russellville, Arkansas, and you're watching Crusade Now Live. Today we're going to be talking about miracles, and I have Elva Sykes with me today. Elva, good to have you with us today. Thank you, Pastor. Glad to be here. We are a church and a people who believe in miracles, and uh, the Bible speaks of miracles, and we worship a God that is still in the miracle working business. Amen. So we're going to be looking at some of the scriptures that we find uh, in the Bible that uh, refers to, to miracles, talks about miracles, and how miracles should be taking place today. Now, you know, there's a lot of people that just don't believe in miracles. That's right. Matter of fact, there's whole denominations That's that right. don't believe in miracles. And it's amazing because I'll, it makes me wonder, uh, you know, where they have been. How can you not... Yeah, I mean, there's testimonies of miracles everywhere. I know you've got lots of testimonies of how God has worked miracles in your own life. And I've got testimonies of how God has worked miracles in my life. But just, you know, uh, different kind of miracles. Usually it's a healing. But yet still, once in a while, I'll run into somebody who is a, professes to be a Christian, but they think miracles is something that was, that was done away with and it's not relevant to to uh, Christianity today. Haven't you encountered that yourself? I surely have. They think it was done away with with the apostles. And we need him more today, I think, than they <laughs> even needed him back then. Makes you wonder what we're supposed to pray for. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we I have a couple scriptures here <laughs> that we might read. Let's turn over to Hebrews chapter 11. You know, that's commonly called the faith chapter. Hebrews chapter 11, if you're following along with us at home. We see there in verse, in verse 1, where Paul says, Faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. Now, that means that we, we can, with, by faith, we can call into existence that which mm -hmm. we do not see, because we know it's a promise from God. Is that how you see that? That's exactly the way I see it. Why don't you read verse 6? And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. Now, what do you think about that? Well, we can't please him without faith, and with, without him... And it looks like, too, I mean, he's saying basically that he is a God who rewards those who Absolutely. seek Absolutely. And you know that he has those rewards for us if we'll just... Come seek. to him and believe. Yeah, just by faith, believe in him. And then, you know, uh, the rest of the chapter goes on and talks about how people had put their trust in God and how many miracles that had taken uh, place in their lives. You know, I was thinking about... Abraham, for example, you know, God promised Abraham a son mm -hmm. when he was, how was 65 years old, but he mm -hmm. was 90 years old before that child was born. And we find in that chapter right there that Sarah, his wife, received the ability to conceive by faith. Now, the promise was there all along. The reward of a son was there all along. Absolutely. But it took faith to bring it about, did it? Certainly did. Hallelujah. You know, we plant seed in the soil. Amen. And we expect it to come up. And it does come up. It sprouts forth. And then it brings forth the fruit. But it seems like we lack faith in planting the seed of the Word of God into the Lord Himself and then believing it to come forth and sprout. Amen. You know, Paul said <clears throat> that all of God's promises are yes. And amen. Amen. <clears throat> so we know that whatever... Uh, God has said he will bring it to pass. Yes, he will. Uh, but, it, but it seems like we're usually not going to realize that unless we receive that by faith and we're, we're expecting it to happen. And it says that God gives a measure of faith at the time of our salvation. Amen. And we have a measure of faith, and I guess he expects us to, to let it grow. Yeah, to act upon that faith and let it grow. All right, let's turn over to Mark chapter 16. Mark 
Mark chapter 16. This is after Jesus' uh, crucifixion and resurrection. Uh, why don't you begin reading in verse 14? Just read through the rest of this chapter. <clears throat> Afterward, he appeared to the eleven themselves as they were reclining at the table. And he reproached them for their unbelief and the hardness of heart, because they had not believed those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all of the world and preach the gospel to all creation. He who has believed and has been baptized shall be saved, but he who has disbelieved shall be condemned. These signs will accompany those who have believed. In my name, they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will pick up serpents, and if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then, when the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word by the signs that followed. Now, Elva, that clearly says there, these signs shall we'll follow, follow those who believe. Who believe. And that, is, that simply means who walk in faith. That's right. Who, who step out in faith and believe. These signs shall follow those who believe. Now, that means if these signs are not following, you're either not a believer or you're not acting upon the measure of faith that God has given you. Isn't that what you would say? That's exactly the way I see it. And in order to please God, then we have to step over into that realm of, of uh, faith. You know, I, you know, we don't see to believe. We have to, we have to see through the eyes of faith, and know because of the promises, whatever the promise is, exists. Right. Even though we may not see it, we may not see that we have healing, but God says that we're healed by his stripes. So we believe and we receive that by faith. That's the way with the ten lepers. Amen. Uh, they all received their healing, but only one came back and thanked the Father or thanked the Lord Jesus Amen. for that healing. I know that's kind of a sad thing. You know, it is. Jesus, Jesus said, well, I thought there was ten of you. Where's yeah. the other nine? You know, and it makes you wonder, did they give God, I mean, maybe somehow along the line they began to say, well, I, maybe I was going to be, maybe I was getting better already, or maybe, you know, give credit to, to natural circumstances. Mm -hmm. You know, I, we've had that happen a number of times where you tell someone of a miracle uh, that has taken place and then they have trouble believing it, meaning they don't want to give credit to God and to the suffering of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so they then start, you know, give, giving the credit to just to natural circumstances. Well, or to the, the doctor. Yeah, the tumor took care of itself. Right. Or, you know, I guess that, that wasn't a, a terminal disease. When in fact, you know, oftentimes it's God who has done the, the miracle. Well, the way I look at it, God is the healer, Amen. even though he uses the hand.